So how does an inkjet printer work? Well, hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today, what we're gonna be looking at is how an inkjet printer works and what is actually going on within this black box when we click print on a computer. And I'm just gonna go through a few of the processes, mainly looking at the head and what's happening and how it actually sprays the ink on the page. Now this weird video has been a bit of a work in progress for a few weeks to be honest. Now I just wanted to put down my research to date into a video on how these printers actually work because they are incredibly complex and there's so much technology in these printers that I think would be hard push to put into a video exactly and what is actually going on in the printer. But I wanted to try and simplify this process and that's kind of hopefully what I've done in this video, kind of talk through the process of what happens actually inside this black box of the printer. Now, before we dive in, a little bit of housekeeping. As always, please don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button in the bottom right there. And also stick around to the end of the video because I will have a discount code that will give you 15% off Photospeed papers on photospeed.com. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive in and find out how these printers actually work. Now, I thought I'd start by just taking you through the process of how we go about printing and kind of what is happening in the printer and the process on each and each step along in the process. So the first thing we do as the operator and as someone who would like a print to come out of the printer is we click print within our chosen application software, say. So be it Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, Affinity, On One, whatever you're using, when you go file print, setting everything up, what actually happens when you click print? So first of all, things start to happen in the computer. The data of your picture, so all the RGB data and all the color information and things is sent across to the printer driver. Now the printer driver is there to convert all that lovely information that we have in Photoshop, say for instance, into a language that the printer can actually understand and use its sensors and head and all the technology that's in the printer to actually print your picture. Now, within the print driver, there are other settings that we can select the media type so we can tell it to use the photo black ink or the matte black ink, etc. And we can tell it to raise the head a little bit and things. There's all these other little options in there that we can use to help the printer along in, it, in the process. But its main role is to there to con convert our computer or visual language of that file on our screen now into a language that the printer can understand and that is what it does it, it's a conversion a translation should we say into this data and this language that the printer can understand now the next thing that happens is that all that lovely data that's been translated is sent over to the printer itself and the file store within the printer's ram within the actual box and it's from there that the printer takes that information and starts translating it into the print so that data tells the printer how fast to move the paper through how much ink to put on what color to use in certain areas and where to print that ink as well and also what quality setting we have if we want a higher dpi or not now this process takes like seconds to do so there's a lot of processing power going on as well. And then once all this data is processed by the printer, it actually starts to print. So it'll just bring in the paper, it will feed it through at a desired speed, and it will then start to print the picture and to spray the ink actually onto the page for us. And then hopefully we'll have a nice print at the end of it. But let me go back to the first kind of question that started me on this journey to be honest of trying to explain kind of so what's happening within this black box and in the printer now the first question i kind of posed myself was how does it actually spray the ink through the nozzles onto the page that was my first question that i wanted to answer now 
I hopefully have kind of simplified this a little bit. There is loads of information out there on the internet if you want to read in any further about this. But I just wanted to keep it nice and simple for this first video on this, just so we could kind of dip our toe into the water, shall we say. So basically how a printer works and how it sprays the ink is through nozzles on the print head. Now if you've ever looked at a print head, you look at it and turn it up and it usually is kind of gold in colour and you can't really see any nozzles at all because they are so fine. They are less than one micron in diameter and there's thousands on that tiny little sheet that's on the print head. So you won't be able to see them with the naked eye. They are so small and you'll need a microscope to be able to see those nozzles. Now, there's hundreds of nozzles for each colour as well. And there's then you can times that by probably a thousand. So there's probably hundreds of thousands of nozzles on, on the head. And they all fire at different kind of densities and things of colour to make up different colours as needed and mix colours and things. So incredibly complex. Now they all work within the same kind of way. So there's two types of processes that can go on and two types of inkjet printers effectively. There are thermal or bubble jet, which mostly Canon and HP are. Now this uses a heat. So within the nozzle, it has a small membrane that electricity is passed through and a current passes through this that generates heat. This in turn produces a bubble. Now this bubble pushes ink out of the nozzle. And then as the bubble bursts, as the current stops and the heat dissipates, then that draws more ink into the nozzle ready to fire on the next pass. Now this takes milliseconds in practice and they, there's all these nozzles firing at once. So there's lots going on. The other process, which is patented by Epson and is a feature of all Epson is preselectric process. Now I'm probably saying that horribly wrong. So please, please don't criticize me too much. However, now Epson's process involves technology they developed, which again is passing an electric current through a membrane, but instead of heating up and creating a bubble, the membrane actually flexes with these pulses of electric going through. And it's this flexing that pushes the ink out of the nozzle of the printer. And as it contracts this membrane, it draws ink back in, ready for the next firing of that nozzle. Now, again, this happens very fast, very quickly, milliseconds in fact. So it's firing hundreds of thousands of times a second to create that lovely smoothness of ink going down on the page. Now, there isn't really a for and against for which method works best. To be honest, they probably both produce the same smoothness and things in practice. Now it could be said thermal heads like the Canons and HPs don't last as long as the Epson heads because there's heat involved in here. I don't think that's true anymore. Um, they have obviously developed heads with this heat technology in mind. So, they should be absolutely fine. Also, there was an argument a few years ago, probably more than 10 years ago, that heating the ink was bad. Again, they've developed the ink to withstand this heating and it is for such a small burst as well and this firing through, yeah, it's gonna be very small, if any kind of change in there. So both are absolutely fine. Again, it comes down to kind of which box you prefer, to be honest, if you like a Canon box or a HP box or an Epson box. And I'd be hard pushed, I think, to tell the difference between the different head types if I was actually, produ if I was actually presented with two prints and they were both printed on different types. I'd be hard pushed, to be honest, to tell the difference. Now, the Epson heads do produce a slightly higher DPI than kind of the Canon counterparts, but it is so small. We're talking around 200 DPI difference. If your eye will ever detect that is another issue and very arguable. So I'm not gonna go into those murky worlds at the minute. 
So those are the two kind of differences and how the head actually fires the ink. So it's the information that's coming from the driver and the electrical pulses created from that data that's actually telling the head which inks to spray at what time. And that will then very precisely as well, incredibly precisely, that we could have instead of in one dot, we could have a number of nozzles firing to create that one dot on the page for different types of color and things and different makeups of color as well. Now it's incredible technology for both sides and both kind of processes and again I, I'm in kind of awe of kind of how it's all done but there's a few other things that are going on in the printer but that's kind of that was kind of the first thing that I wanted to kind of touch upon and kind of have a look at and how actually the ink is sprayed physically from the cartridges onto the paper and it's all to do with these processes. There's a few other little sensors going on and kind of communication that's happening within the printer. Now the first one translates data into where the ink should be sprayed. So there's a little bit of set of data that tells the nozzles when to fire, but also it has to be married up and work together with the head moving. Now it knows how to move the head and where to fire the ink by something called a timing strip or a coding strip. Now this is a little bit of plastic. It looks like a gray strip of plastic that runs the length of the printer. And it looks gray, but in fact, it's actually black lines, very, very fine microns in thickness of black lines going through here. And this, the head will have a little photo sensor on and it just senses where these black lines are. And in very, very, very simple terms, I'm apologizing if I'm kind of oversimplifying this, but it effectively counts the black strips going along. There's a lot more to it than that I know, so please don't go in the comments about it. But it effectively will know where it is on this strip. So the head will move backwards and forwards, and as it's passing, it will tell the head when to spray certain types of ink and things. Again, incredible technology. But also there's another little sensor that's feeding the paper through as well. So that tells it the speed that to go through. Because it is actually the speed of the paper that determines the DPI. All heads will print normally at a horizontal and vertical DPI. Let's take the Epson for instance, which is 1440 DPI. So dots per inch on that page. If we wanted to go up to a higher DPI, we effectively slow the paper down going through and the head knows to basically fill in the gaps to create a finer weave of dots on the page. So there's another little sensor that's feeding this through and they are all talking to each other and they're all working together. Now there can always be a little bit of a mismatch going on. So the paper could be feeding through too fast or too slowly, and that is where we get banding, so lines going across our print. So the nozzles are firing, but the paper isn't quite marrying up with this. Now on the Canon printers, you can allow for this through something called a feed adjustment, and it will basically bring those two settings back in line. So this could be caused by a thicker media, so the media types could be quite important when we're looking at this because a thicker media could slow that paper down so we'd have a little bit of banding or dark banding going across. So picking the right media type is really crucial. But also with the Canons you can adjust this through a feed adjustment and the media configuration tool to make everything marry up again. So hopefully you kind of have a rough idea of what's going on in the printer now. I've kind of kept it to those core elements for you and kind of hopefully kind of made things a bit simpler to understand of what's actually going on. But like I said, the first element I wanted to talk about was how the head worked and things like that. But that led on to a lot of other sensors and things going on of fire in the ink at certain points. So I hope just giving you kind of a a starting point, shall we say, we, we could work on in the future about how a printer actually works. 
and what is actually going on. Now, as always, please don't forget to subscribe to the video. Just click that subscribe button in the bottom right there. Also, please use the voucher code FSYouTube15 that will give you 15% off Photospeed papers on photospeed.com. And for all you US viewers out there, please order online on photospeed.com because we now have a flat shipping rate of $9. You will be liable for any taxes, etc., within your own state, but nice flat shipping fee just to get the product over to you. So please have a look at our website. Now, I hope that's been useful and I hope it has hopefully open the door a little bit of how a printer actually works and what's going on within this black box. Like I said, hopefully I'm going to start to uh, build on this in the future and do a bit of a series on these as well, what's going on. But hopefully that's a nice introduction, should we say. So until next week, have an amazing week and enjoy the sun and I will see you next Thursday. Thanks very much. Bye bye.